The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. There is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. And so it is to the printing press, to the recorder of man's deeds, the keeper of his conscience, the courier of his news, that we look for strength and assistance, confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. us to back off. You want us to shut up on our country and our sovereignty and our borders and everything we've ever been and everything we'll ever be is being destroyed. You got the nerve to call us traitors and call us conspiracy theorists just because we're informed and you knowingly lie to your audience and you knowingly try to keep them from the truth and you try to keep them from learning the serious peril this nation and this planet is in. And all these people do have is hurt. That's all the New World Order is. That's all they're ever going to be. Of all the hundreds of sources, really thousands total out there, you know, I'm the, you know, the big thing that it all orbits, which I hate. So many people say, well, Alex Jones has this belief system about a, a global order. They write thousands of textbooks and documents on it. It's not Alex Jones has this belief system in a new world order. Alex Jones can't articulate how diabolical and totally wicked they are. It isn't some magical thing, karma, reap what you sow. I mean, it's what happens. You start crapping on everybody else around you, then it, suddenly you're all swimming in crap. And we're swimming in crap. The analogy is they're hanging off helicopter skids like the fall of Saigon in Vietnam to get out of here, man. They're all fleeing right now. They're all moving to Costa Rica. Hollywood's all running down there, building armored compounds. The rich are all moving to the Cook Islands in New Zealand. What's going on? What do they have planned for this country? Why are they building FEMA camps? Does that mean in two years from now they would have used them? I don't know. The point is they're building it. It's like somebody putting a gun to your head and you go, well, don't complain about the gun. I haven't pulled the trigger. Hey, man, all I know is this government's put a gun to our head. Morning. You know where the hotel is? Yes, sir. I'm following you. Stay in attack formation. That's right. Well, we're leaving Austin, Texas, traveling up to Dallas, the site of the 1963 assassination of John F. Kennedy. I don't want to use this term, but it's really the proper one. We're going back to Eden. But it's not a wonderful, beautiful place. It's a horrible place where the military industrial complex murdered our last real president in broad daylight in front of everyone. Uh, we're going back to the birthplace of what you could call the conspiracy culture. There's the famous grassy knoll. Anytime you question any government corruption, they say, oh, they're on the grassy knoll. By the way, 
this is one of the only missions where I've actually told my guys is we don't live in a paranoid world. This is one of the few missions where there is a little bit of danger. I mean, even 40-something years later, this, this goes to the highest levels, and people still get whacked over this stuff. They'll come in your hotel room with a demagnetizer and fry all your tapes. They'll uh, play all kinds of games. We're standing here in the center lane of Elm Street, exactly where the presidential limousine was. And if you turn and look up at the sixth floor window of what was the scuba depository, you'll see that you can't get a line of sight because this tree intervenes. You can't make the shot. All of my films are about exposing things that powerful individuals, powerful organizations have done to oppress smaller countries or groups of people. And I have a passion to awaken people and to show them things that I've discovered and that others have seen. This is an exact duplicate of the 6.5 millimeter Mannlicher Carcano carbine rifle that they said Oswald used in the assassination of President Kennedy. We're gonna see how easy it is to get in three shots in six seconds. That red Volkswagen. I mean, there's no way to aim. No, no way How many do. shots I get off? You, you got off three. You got off three. Right at six, but it was just not even. I mean, it, I mean, I just couldn't. It, just, yeah. it was just like you wouldn't have hit anything. Yeah. yeah. All right, this is going to be JFK assassination 101. Okay, so just hang We're on to your hat. Right. Don't rush over points because I know you're, you're the brain on this. Yes, and yes. I'll be right back in about 15 minutes. Okay. okay. Does anybody need a bathroom break? Nope. Well, no pee pee break now if you need to. No, no, no. We're, I'm good for another 20 minutes or so. All right. All right. We're we'll we'll ready. Okay. Are we going? We'll be okay, Daddy. Are we going? Hey, sorry I hadn't called you today. Uh, how are the kids? She doesn't have a cold anymore? All right, well, I miss you. All right, well, I'm going to finish up this interview, and then I'm going to call you back, okay? Okay, love you, bye. If forces in this country could kill the President of the United States and get away with it, then... They'd stop at nothing. They you would know? stop at nothing. Kill you, me, anybody, mm -hmm. you know? These are the globalists. These are the people that George Bush Sr. referred to as the new world order. Okay. Day of 9 11, I was actually in high school. When I was coming from school, the dust from the towers is actually on almost every car. You could actually write your name in the dust like it was actually snow. And it was actually papers from the Twin Towers that actually landed here in my own backyard. And I just remember sitting home and watching the TV and nothing else for weeks and weeks, watching the same footage over and over again, being showed the towers coming down and Osama bin Laden and the towers coming down and Osama bin Laden. And originally, I believed the official story. I actually wanted to go to the recruiting station and sign up for the army so I could fight in Afghanistan. Later, started really finding out what's going on. And uh, there was one incident where I was actually uh, beat up by the police department here in New York City. And that made me take a look around and see what kind of changing world we're living in. What really started me off was 9-11 Road to Tyranny by Alex Jones. After first saying it, I didn't really want to believe it. And it took me a good three, four weeks of just spending sleepless nights investigating to really find out we need to do something about this. These are just some of the DVDs that me and my friends burnt, a compilation of Alex Jones films and clips that we found informative. We just wrap them and we give them out to anybody and everybody that walks past us at Ground Zero every Saturday. Today I'm stuck with the flyers. My other friends are stuck with banners, info boards, DVDs. We all bring whatever we can and we all make it happen. We got the flyers if you guys need it. Don't believe what you hear on the news. Free information, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like one too, ma'am? Thank you very much. The first time we came out here, there was a whole bunch of guys that got arrested for just standing on a public sidewalk giving out information. We went to court, and this is the official court transcript of what happened, saying that this is public property and we could be out here because of freedom of speech. Every time the police try to do something, we show them this document. I'll take those down right now, and I'll put them over there. Yeah, okay, no problem at all. We'll take care of it. Have a good day. Anything else, just talk to me. Thank you. This is one of the bulletin boards that we have out here, and it actually shows photographic evidence of explosions. You actually see demolition squibs going off here and here where the major support columns were for the World Trade Center buildings. 
We actually have testimony from the FDNY firefighters who heard bombs and explosions within the building before it actually collapsed. And you can actually read some of the testimony here. This is actually what happened to our air defense system on NOT-11. NORAD has standard protocol that within 15 minutes when a plane goes off course, they scramble an F-16. There was no fighters protecting the U.S. air skies for two hours when four airplanes were off course. Why the hell did this happen? This is on the FBI's most wanted list. The FBI is not looking for Osama bin Laden because of not 11. They list the U.S.'s coal bombings, the U.S. embassy bombings in Kenya, but they never mention not 11. And they're not even looking for Osama bin Laden. The man is practically free. Uh, David Rockefeller before 9-11 said that there needs to be a catastrophic catalyzing event to have a one world government, a new world order. Their event was 9-11. Anybody else want a DVD? It's free. You go. No problem. We usually have a core group from about 20 to 40 people that show up and participate in the Saturday street actions. On 9-11, we always get around 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 people to come down to Ground Zero. This year on 9-11, we're going to be premiering uh, Endgame. Endgame is a documentary by Alex Jones documenting the Bilderberg Group and the elite's control over the world population. The Bilderberg Group consists of the heads of all of the managing roundtable groups that steer individual countries. Picture the elite power structure of the world as a giant pyramid with only the elite of the elite at the tip top of the capstone. Former World Bank President James Wolftonson, Rockefeller frontman Henry Kissinger, Vice Chairman of Rothschild Europe, the head of Daimler Chrysler, the owner of the Washington Post, Donald Graham, David Rockefeller. The group has been so secretive that until the mid-1980s, the controlled corporate media denied its existence. With the rise of the alternative media, their stranglehold on information has begun to slip. Some would call it an obsession, but I, I see it as passion. Um, I don't really have much of an interest in anything else, really. Just making films, and specifically ones that have to do with uh, the Bilderberg Group or the New World Order. I would like them stopped, actually, but I don't know if that's possible. So uh, the best thing would be to get some sort of transparency as regards their meetings, what they're discussing. The Bilderberg Group are a consortium of bankers, uh, industrialists, businessmen, the richest and the most powerful in their own specialised fields. And they come together every year in a different country uh, to hold a secret meeting on how better to implement world policies to control what's going on. I'm here today because, like every year, I chase Bilderberg to expose those termites, to turn the rock over and see what those bugs are doing. It'll be a luxurious resort surrounded by armed guards with all the manpower we have trained on it. I think we'll find them. See that? Uh huh. See there? Oh, uh huh. The people? Yeah. Officer, is a Bilderberg meeting here this weekend? Close your camera. The same white car, been followed many times. They're very likely Bilderberg boys. This looks like it. Looks like we struck gold. That's a bit of a car. 
See that? It was M25 in the windshield and there was a lady in the... Closed down. İngilizce bilen gelsin oğlum. Ne diyor? Yasak olduğunu, tedbirlerin devam ettiğini söylesin birisi. So you open tomorrow? Hani? No. Biz aşağıda so. sorduk. Burada bir yerde Bilderberg'in tanıtma ofisi varmış diye. Onlar buraya geldiler. Öyle bir şey yok beyefendi. Yok. Tedbirlerimiz evet. devam ediyor. Röportajcılar için yok mu? Evet. Evet. Buyurun. I am afraid of being targeted because of these things. It's a state of being between fear and uh, and and anger. I don't know if I if I can be doing it all my life. Um, no, actually, do you know what? Uh, I think I will be. <laughs> Could be that I've got some weird thing in my you know chip in my ear saying you have to save the world. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I did actually get a cat scan and anyway, oh, it showed something very interesting. If you look at the world today and you go why is everything going wrong and why are people dying and there's civil wars and unrest and people dying of famine etc you can't see what the connections are but when you look at the the plans that for example the Bilderberg group or the secret government have had since the 50s suddenly you just everything becomes simple you know you don't have to save the world the world is fine as it is it's just that a certain group a small group of people are actually at the top of this pyramid who are actually controlling um who are creating these kind of realities terrorism and all that stuff and all those that love God and liberty listening in around the world. Welcome back to the Officer Jack McLam program coming to you from the high Rocky Mountains of Idaho, USA. We've been having citizens meetings here in our local area. We discuss things like this FBI flyer that was handed out to police officers only. If you encounter any of these people, immediately call the Joint Terrorism Task Force right-wing extremists, people that make numerous references to the U.S. Constitution are domestic terrorists. We're one of 350 families that came up here to get away from what we believe is coming as the collapse of the American civilization. We try to get the top of the mountains to build our communities because old Colonel Bo Greitz talks about the military aspect to capture the high ground. This is what a police officer used to be, and that's what I was on the city of Phoenix. I was a friend of the people. But today, this is what we have. This one is your enforcer, and he's enforcing the new world order locally, state, and federally. I began to change. I began to see that I was part of a corrupt system, a very evil system, and I wasn't going to do it. When they gave me an immoral order or an unlawful order, I said, no, I won't do it. That was it for my career. This is what we fight here in our two police and military organizations. We fight to educate our soldiers and police officers about their constitutional oath to defend you and your freedoms. I'd like to bring on again our guest speaker, Jack McLean. We started something called the Aid and Abet Police Newsletter. The subtitle was Constitutional Issues for Lawmen. I was being ostracized and driven out of my career because I wanted to serve and protect the people 
100%. My favorite job in the whole world was being a beat officer. Going daily to people's homes when they need you. And uh, <clears throat> uh, when you're that comfortable with what you're doing and that satisfied, you don't want to make waves. You don't want to change anything. I've dedicated 27 years to this work as a volunteer. And my wife can tell you, we have nothing. I would love to have a home. I don't. I live in an old 1977 mobile home, single wide. My bride deserves better than that. But we live on my small medical pension, and we don't have hardly anything. But I can't stop. We have the, the, the jury box. We have the ballot box. And then we have the cartridge box. We still have our guns. It might come to violence. I pray not, you know. But we're not going to be slaves. I'm not going to see my nine grandchildren be slaves. You know, I'm just not going to do that, you know. It has never been an American war, small or large, in which access has been so limited. The so-called war on terrorism has created a climate of effective censorship in a land claiming to be the home of free speech. May it have been uh, an inside job? Might these people have gotten help from the inside? Now there's a lot more evidence that suggests it's almost certainly the case. Loose Chain's Final Cut is a 9-11 Truth documentary questioning the official government story of 9-11. I've seen it probably 50 times now. I watch it all the time whenever I get time. I'm not on a spiritual quest for the truth, you know. In a sense I am, but it's not a spiritually driven thing, I don't think. It gets kind of confusing. I got it down in my head, though. That's my boat, and the other two boats are my bosses, and they have another boat. You can see the roof of their house way over there. I was originally one of the carpenters that helped build the, the house. When we got done building the house, you know, they offered me a job to stay on as a caretaker. So, you know, it was either go back to Orlando and sit in traffic all day, live out on an island, and take a boat to work. Attention all citizens! We are giving away free DVDs that proves the official government story of 9-11 is a lie and a cover-up. I encourage each and every one of you to take a free DVD home, watch it, and decide for yourself. This is more important than how much Britney Spears hair sold for on eBay, Dancing with the Stars, or who's going to be America's next idol. Sure can, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, I work construction. I've seen controlled Sir, demolition. One, one Building says, 7. Building 7 was a 47-story yeah, building. And it was damaged because I watched and it, it fell live. in six and a half seconds. Free fall I speed. watched it. I saw it. I heard no explosions. When there's a controlled oh, demolition. There's, so, there, there's eyewitness what? reports of you, sir. You're I watched it on TV you're live. You're missing four. You're missing four. Uh, I didn't see it on TV. Watch this I DVD. I didn't see it live. Don't watch Watch this DVD and listen to the eyewitness testimony I, about explosions going what off you're saying before to the me, first plane what, even hit. What, can, you, can you name me another building that's fallen from fire like that, too, by the way? Any In the he's, world, he's anywhere? The guy that goes I, I don't know any other... Because uh, uh, there is. I don't know... I was a big part of the anti-war movement when the Iraq war started. I marched in Washington. It was estimated at, you know, 500,000 people. Those politicians probably weren't even in town that day. They can care less that we were there. 9-11 is the justification for everything that's going on, so why not talk about 9-11? I don't believe in aliens. I really could care less who shot John F. Kennedy. Um, I don't give a fuck if we landed on the moon or not. Um, yes, the Holocaust did happen. I've been to Dachau and, and seen that kind of stuff. I truly believe 9-11 was an inside job, and I would like to see the people that, that actually, you know, orchestrated the events that happened that morning, I would like to see those people held accountable, put in jail, you know, and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, whether that be the death penalty or life in prison. They need to get one or the other, in my opinion. They were told to go to the convention center. They did. And what I saw there, I've never seen in this country. I saw two gentlemen die in front of me. They were just covered up in their wheelchair. Babies, two babies dehydrated and died. These are the families who listened to the authorities, who followed direction, who believed in the government, and they followed directions. They walked miles, floodwaters up to their chest. 
for a whole day and they follow direction. These are law-abiding citizens who have been left behind. Katrina woke me up and I was living in northwest Arkansas, 18 hours from here. And God had an impact on my life by sending me here and letting me see this. When I got here, there was debris on both sides of the road, like a snowplow, if you can picture a snowplow coming down the road. And on both sides of the road was debris, chest high, like the snowplow had just plowed it over. And I think FEMA is a complete failure, and the government shouldn't say, trust us with your money, because we're going to help people, because that's the kind of help they get after two and a half years. You got it. We feed about five, six hundred meals a day out of here right now for all the volunteers that come down here to help out their fellow American citizens so that FEMA don't have to, because Lord knows they don't know what the hell they're doing. Digging ditches and doing ditches. I can't think of anything I hate worse besides liars, which we'll get into that later. world definitely changed on 9-11. I think anybody would say that. It, it, when you turn on the news, what is the first thing, what do you hear almost every day? You hear post 9-11, post 9-11, terrorism, terrorism, terrorism, 9-11, terrorism, Iraq, weapons of mass destruction, weapons of mass destruction, Iraq, Afghanistan, terrorist, Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda, all these words, all these things I'd never heard until 9-11. I never heard of any of this, any of these people. It's woke me up and it's changed my life and it's made me want to stand for something and it's made me want to fight for my people. It's made me want to wake other people up to understand what is going on. I, you know, I want people to wake up to the global elite that run this country. I want to see a change on this earth. I mean, you have made a significant commitment, a lifelong commitment to this. Do you remember a moment when you decided to devote your life to this? I mean, was there like a... Was it filmmaking that brought you to it? What brought it? No, that... Waco. People are murderers. I'm sick and tired of hearing your lies when you machine gunned a bunch of men, women, and children. You got a big problem, buddy. You sit over here. I'm not afraid of you guys. I'm a law-abiding citizen, and I'm sick of it. You sit over here, and you talk about how the children huddle in the corner and how the ammunition that they had is what killed them, all the rest of your garbage. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You don't stand up for the Constitution. You stand for zip, not a zero. You, you have no calm of plumb. It's false, my friend. Let me tell you, a lot of people are writing down your names. You can follow people around. You can harass people. You can back up your banks, your buddies. But a revolution of peaceful information is coming. And when it comes time, you people are going to be brought to punishment. If you see somebody when you're out with your cameras who you'd like to ask questions, they're public servants, now officials and authorities, and we're civilians, all this military terminology, but they should talk to you, and they should be asked questions, and that's what old muckraking, muckraking reporters 175, even 50 years ago did, is they chased them down. Hey, I got a question. Hey, I want to know about this. We need that again. Congressman Doggett. 
My name is Alex Jones. I'm here to ask you about the Council on Foreign Relations. Sir, shouldn't we abolish the Federal Reserve and the CFR? That's the real reality that none of you will talk about, and most of you are members. You people are being lied to. This country's been taken over by Europe, and I'm being drug out. For Laugh at it. I got some cuffs. Let's take him right here up against the glass. Let's trap him on the glass. Take it out. Well, this is just our little shipping office, and it supplements the radio show and the filmmaking and what we do. And we sell a lot of other books and videos uh, by other researchers. I just brainstormed with Rob and Aaron about all of the subjects and all the things the globalists were involved in and how they all tie together. So you have central banks, corporate fascist coups, income tax, Woodrow Wilson, Federal Reserve, social Darwinism. They've set up their world government to the UN, and they have the Bilderberg Group, where the owners of it all privately meet and discuss the course for the next year. You've got their main agendas, eugenics, and they're implementing their control and takeover through the American Union and the NAFTA highways to fund it, and the Amero and the Open Borders and the Security and Prosperity Partnership, and um, it just all ties together. I'm here trying to mobilize the leaders, the good people, the champions uh, who are out there right now. I'm trying to mobilize you in defense of the human species against a very out-of-control, aberrant, malfunctioning group of our fellow humans who are doing some very bad things. And I'm trying to mobilize them to take action against the New World Order and to resist them. And a short time to get there. Hold oh, no. on. Old Smokey's he's got, got his ears on, and he's hot on your trail, and he's not going to rest and you're in jail. So you got to dodge him, you got to duck him, you got to keep that diesel trucking, just put that hammer down and, and give him hell. He's the problem with the Pentagon, the Pentagon would be great to get because it's occultic too. The problem is, is that if they see you anywhere, even miles around videotaping it, Army Protective Services or Pentagon Protective Services, two different groups, that happened to Dylan Avery. Run over, grab your cameras, erase everything, and put guns to your head. And that's really exciting to get on tape, but I don't really want to have it on tape. You guys want to go to the Pentagon? What we're looking at here is a giant Masonic obelisk, a giant power talisman that was built uh, with religious love and care. A lot of people know this. Remember in Ghostbusters, where the whole building is an antenna for religious power? They didn't think that up. It's in all the Masonic literature. You see, so you'd think of it like that, and people would say, well, that's in a movie. Well, movies generally reflect life. They just then add a, some stupid ghosts and goblins to it. Let's be clear. I don't believe that they're really pulling energy and power into their phallus and energizing themselves to be God-men. Uh, they believe it. What's going on? All we're doing is out here videotaping this. That's all we're doing. That's fine, As U.S. Sir. citizens, great. I'm just, and I'm not trying to get mad at you. I mean, we've been harassed for three days at, at the at the Lincoln, at the, and they won't give us a permit, and then they get mad and say you don't need one. So what are we supposed to do? They don't issue permits. They say you don't need one, and we've, you know, this is all documented, and then it's just incredible. So anyway, we're just trying to do our job. That's all. That's fine, sir. Thanks. I appreciate you, sir. All right, let's just try to get this too hot. Let's go get the other stuff. We're being followed now, you know. There's like Secret Service guys with their shirts off, those bikes were watching us. They were over there, now they're over there. Come on, leave them alone, Rob. Let's go. Yeah, that fellow already talked to us on the other side. We got you up for that. Are you guys? Yeah, you and there's. Up on, you're up on uh, yeah. 17th Street a couple minutes Yeah. Ago? All right, well, the only thing is you can't put the tri off, tripod up over here, is the only thing. And, and why is that? That's just ordinance, I guess. Oh, Jesus. Third world countries, you don't get bossed around like this. The country's gone third world. Young men, if you really want to stop the war, let me tell you what's really going on. They own both parties. They give you a false left paradigm to think you can escape out of it. It's not just about oil, it's about trillions in weapon sales. It's about setting up a domestic police state here. And it's about giving them political capital to take our liberties and give defense contractors the surveillance camera uh, contracts and, and turn the United States into a control grid. So the real target of this war is the United States itself. And Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, all of them, they're owned by the very same interests. John McCain, they're all bad. You ever heard of Ron Paul? Yeah, Ron Paul Revolution, baby. Yeah, good. 
You know about the secret, you know, cabals, shadow government? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of that. Well, that's it, my friend. So take them down. <laughs> right. Deal with them in the info war. <laughs> we need to really show this to all the police. See that? Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people, peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievance. It's all right there. And you tell them that and they say, listen, if you want to get hurt, we run things now. Shut up. I noticed this one particular person was calling us civilians. No longer servants, no longer representatives. It's now authority, official, and you're a civilian. Shut up! I've been in Iraq pushing them around, and now I push you around. It's crazy. They're not supposed to be calling us civilians, you know, cops. Hey, I'm going to push you, black guy. If you don't like it, I'm going to taste you. No reason. Oh, you're begging me, huh? That just gets me hot. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's You laughing crazy. at me? You laughing at me, civilian? <laughs> that right there is, uh... Maybe I'll put duct tape on your mouth, your eyes, arms, and legs, and throw you in the river. Talk about how you committed suicide. What about the government? You don't like it, boy? How about government figures? We run this country now. Bend him over. Come on, little piggy. Let me hear you squeal. Wee, wee, you little piggy. We run this country now. Yeah, we run it. It's ours. <laughs> you gonna learn, boy. We gonna learn you good now. Who runs it? <laughs> the government's king, and we rule. All I gotta do is go get the job as cop. And now I tell you what you do. Now I tell everybody. You understand me, boy? Huh? Huh? <laughs> that didn't come out in the trial. You're some kind of provocateur. In fact, you're one of those FBI agents, aren't you? I don't personally, I don't give a damn. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You don't stand up for the Constitution. You stand for zip, not a zero. He has sort of like a charisma. He has sort of like a, a very uh, loud voice, and he's not afraid to speak it. He's not afraid to say what's on his mind. And uh, he's a very uh, powerful speaker. Stop your fear, Margaret and John McCain. We know the truth. The Hamilton and Thomas Kane said they were set up to fail. It's public record they did. We need a new investigation, sir. Please, in the days following 9-11, you met with the head of Pakistani ISI, General Mohad Ahmed. Why was he allowed go to go back to Pakistan, and why was he questioned, and why were you meeting with him? First thing called diplomatic passports. We did not arrest Khrushchev when he came. But he financed we did the not... hijackers, and you well, let him go, way, and he's free. These guys he hijacked the fi hijackers. No one knew he financed the hijackers. He it's why. As they it's, say, it's, get away. Earlier on this year, you gave a speech to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee where you alluded to the fact that the Bush administration may stage a terrorist attack to justify a military action against Iran. How do the American people know that 9-11 was a stage, was it engineered by you, David Rockefeller, the Trilateral Commission, the CFR, and Bilderberg Group, sir? You're not allowed to use a camera. I'm pressed. Every right. No, you have no right. The New World Order is going down, sir. You can laugh. Wake up, people. <laughs> They try to take my tape, but I am guess I'm too quick for him, and he can't catch me. So I hope you guys enjoy the footage. And, uh, yeah, Brzezinski, you got yours. There is a barrier between elected officials and average citizens. We have to break that barrier because we're not sucking up to them. We're speaking truth to power. We're looking them right, we're looking them right in their eyes and confronting them on their lies. These are the tapes from uh, this year's Bilderberg meeting. This is Pat Buchanan. Shatner, we, we confronted William Shatner on 9 11 Truth. This is also Arnold Schwarzenegger, the tax protest, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Nowadays, with technology, you can express yourself more than ever with a video camera and the internet. And with that tool, I think it's one of the biggest weapons in this info war. I think it's very important to understand the war and understand what our troops are going through. Humanity is out of it, but People are brought down to reality by watching clips on YouTube, by watching clips on the internet of exactly what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, what you guys got to do. Spooky. You, all you get to see is their heat off their bodies. And what's really creepy about it is when they're shot and when they're killed. Yep their light goes off. 
Like... During Vietnam, one of the key things that made people want to revolt and made people want to uh, resist the war is videos like like this, videos of horrible things going on in Vietnam. And right now you see the media not doing their job, not covering what's going on in there, not covering how our soldiers are being wounded, how Iraqis are being killed. For their, they say break. The Democratic Socialist and the Republican Fascist administrations hate us because we we're so tenacious with fighting for liberty and freedom for all people. We're doing the very best we can to fight as long as we can in a nonviolent redress of our grievances because none of us want bloodshed, you know. However, the government keeps coming in and drawing blood, you know, on the Weaver family, the Waco church. And I was up at uh, Ruby Ridge handling the negotiations for the FBI for the Weaver family. And that was an eye-opener to me. I never thought I'd ever see 500 police attack a family up in the mountains and kill, kill part of the family, the mom and the son, and just flat murder them. And uh, that was an eye-opener for me, I'll tell you. Boy, that was something. Good afternoon. A federal agent has been shot and killed in a confrontation with a fugitive in North Idaho. Randy Weaver, a fugitive on a federal firearms charge, has been holed up in a cabin near Naples for more than a year. Randy Weaver has told friends all he wants is to be left alone. But with the sudden appearance of military hardware like this, his one man stand against the law is suddenly taking on the appearance of a full-blown war. Joey, how much longer will you let this go on? Federal officials have just announced Randy Weaver's 13-year-old son died during the initial shootout Friday. Randy's in good health. Unfortunately, Vicky is dead. Karen, uh, the news uh, just a few moments ago that Vicki Weaver, the wife of Randall Weaver, has been shot and killed. She was shot and killed last Saturday and has been dead for six days. It's a very volatile situation, although it appears to be quiet at this moment. That's great. My phone isn't operating this morning. <laughs> Neither line's working. Jeez. We'll lay hands on it. We've got, yeah, lay hands on it. Pray over it. <laughs> yeah, right. That's not a bad idea. I forgot to bring my tools with me. I, I may have to run home and get them for you. Don't get it working. Right. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, it's working out. Ah, praise the Lord. Thank you, Marty. Yeah, I didn't bring I'm glad you came phone. over, brother. <laughs> my phone fixer and my hair doer. <laughs> yeah, normally this is not doesn't happen this way. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> it looks a little bit better. My chimes. I don't want the chimes. Something's yeah, wrong. Yeah, already. Now it's the. Uh... A lot of people came here for their religious rights. One of the most important things, I think, is uh, has to do with our Christian rights. Uh, don't you think so, Jen? I think that people came into this community as a covenant community so we could live the way that our great-grandparents lived. Yeah, that's right. A hundred to two hundred years ago. I want to be a free man myself. I want to be free to live for God, to help my brothers, to live for one another, to have love for one another. I don't want to be controlled, and I think the New World Order is control. And uh, it's evil, I believe. There are two forces. There is no gray matter. It's all either black or it's white. It is good versus evil. And good will always prevail. Because when we know the truth, the truth truly will set us free. I don't know for sure how many I have uh, to tell you the truth. A lot of them I ordered from different ones. Alex Jones, for example. I ordered some from him. You guys heard of the Philadelphia experiment? <laughs> it's kind of interesting. <laughs> Mind control out of control. It was only a paper moon. I was telling you about that one. That's about the um, Apollo moon ship. I feel like militias are important because we can't always trust our own government for one reason. If we don't have our own militias, our own groups, and our government comes against us, we're just slaves. They can enslave us, put us in prison, or whatever they want to do with us. Yeah, get your guitar out, Pa. 
My yeah. vacuum song? Yeah. From Romans 8:28? Yeah, sing it. Yeah. Oh, that all things work together for good? Yeah. That one? Uh, yeah. Okay. See? When I was just a little child, my father said to me, if you'll put Jesus first in your life, this is what you'll see, that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. All things work together for good by trusting in His Word. Troubles may come. We have a hotel room at the Westfields Marriott, but we're kicked out in the morning when the official Bilderberg Group meeting starts. A day ago, it was crawling with security. You pull a camera out, they run up and threaten to arrest you. If you had 100 film stars meeting in secret at a luxury hotel, the whole world will want to know. But we have 120 plus world elitist meeting, and it's strange that we citizens would want to cover this, that citizens would want to follow this, that we would want to be involved. How dare us? This is what real media is supposed to do. Here is the Marriott Hotel. There is a cul-de-sac drive right here. We've got a camera right here, and we've also got a room right down here. So we've got this area covered and this area covered. This is a little video unit. It's not super high quality. This is our little backup in case they come grab our cameras and are trying to set us up. We've got a chance if all of us have these of somebody getting out with it, and then they're all going to jail. Uh, somehow some alarm just went off in the hall, Tom. Close the door. Close the door. How long ago did Tom call? That second. That very second. Get your higher quality cameras out and roll them. This may be some kind of setup. Turn most of the lights out. They do not want me on this show is why this was done. This was done the minute Coast to Coast AM called. You got the small cams? Yeah. Give it to me. Are we going to evac the room for the fire or alarm? No, or? i got to talk to 16 million people. This was done on purpose to shut down this interview. They're mad that it went on last night. I'm going live. George, for the last five minutes, I've been in an incredible emergency just waiting for you to come to me. George, we're sitting here in the room. As the phone rings with your producer, Tom Danheiser, to put me on, the fire alarm goes off. Open the door. I want him to hear the fire alarm. Open the door. I want people to hear this live. We have a security guy walk up to us 30 minutes ago, about 25 minutes ago. And then he said, yeah, we had somebody do a fire alarm a few weeks ago. And me and Rob, my camera guy, were going, why is he telling us about a fire alarm? I forgot that part, George. These bastards have done this. I don't know how. They're planning to try to set us up or something. But this is incredible. We are here in the middle of this right now, George. Okay, we'll get out of here. Here, you stay. You come after us. Let's go. Come on. We'll see you. Perfect cover, that guy. We're helping him get out. Get him up here now. They know his name. They fucking told us it was a setup. Hold on, wait, wait. I'm going to get it. This is real. This is fucking joking around. I'm the man. I'm in command. Do what I say. We don't have time for this. No elevator. Yeah, 50 liters here. Come on. All right. They're the way. Tell them the stairs are by the elevator. Okay, I got to call Tom Danheiser now. Dude, they're letting us know this is a serious threat right at us. Dude, they're getting over there. Over here. We're going to check out tonight, dude. I'm getting out of here with the footage we got. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I'm not going to sit here and push my luck. The security guy told us the story about, about fire alarms. You know, there's people that pull fire alarms. Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. When they're trying to rob this place. They were trying to set us up. This is unbelievable. Oh, Jesus. We got to calm down and assess this. Oh, I totally forgot. He said, he comes back to me, and I said, listen, everything's all right. And he said, listen. He said it repeatedly. He goes, listen, Alex and Rob, one more time, I'm going to fuck you up. You're not on the name deal. I know. You didn't. That's it. Done. See? They have See? Our... It gets worse. I just realized he also knew our first names. I'm going to fuck you and Rob up if you do it. This guy knows Rob's name. Okay? Done. They are doing some kind of operation. 
Jesus Christ. I just hope they don't do some really bad stuff, that's all. Really concerns me that they had that FBI style guy and then another guy earlier said things a little bit less today in this one and then one at the other place asking we were planning to attack federal buildings. Give me a freaking break, man. Yeah, with our video cameras. First Amendment. Let's take a break. I got to make some phone calls. We got him. Dude, it's going to get better and better. Here we go. Stop. That guy's Secret Service all the way. Boy, they're eyeballing just some business lady. We got to go ahead and break this down. See if that cop's following us. Look at these government trucks, man. Yeah, we got a car right behind us. Just get out of here, Richard. Go as soon as you can, Richard. Is that guy still following us? Yep. Keep going. Go pull into that car wash over there. Go into that shopping center over there. Come stop, here. stop, stop. I want footage. Okay, go He's that coming way. Around the back. He's right no, around I want to get head on with him. Yeah, oh, that's definitely military intelligence. Following. Following fast. Don't lose him. Get on his ass. Get his plates. Stop. That's all right. I don't want to harass him too much. He'll call him back up. Go park over there. Let's go out this way so they don't notice the vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. You want your camera set up right at the view level. Their windshields are going to be about right here. This is windshield level. Rob, bring a super zoom in. I want super zoom on that. Say hi to Alex. Hey, hey right son. There, say hi. No, I mean, come on over because I wasn't here earlier. Do you tell me? But I mean, have you confirmed what they're saying is true, officer? Dude, that cop's on our side, I can tell. Yeah. You need to get off the island. <laughs> is this private property? Yes, it is, sir. Get him. Get him. Your hey, new world order's going down. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. We're out here because this is where the elites meet with Secret Service, with Mossad, with MI6 security backing them up. Why isn't the U.S. mainstream media reporting on it? Set it up right now, up, uh, internet card, firewire, camera right here, and we're going live, just like major media does, but we're doing it through the internet. In a couple of months, 9-11 is going to be taking place, and we're going to have huge street actions in the city of New York where we're going to give out hundreds of thousands of flyers. Uh, hundreds of DVDs, and we're going to give them out free for the people, and we're going to educate people, we're going to change minds, and we're going to save lives with the money we raise for first responders. As soon as I put it up, Alex Jones had it up on InfoWars. He was praising the fact that people are getting out and doing these confrontations and saying these criminals, no matter where they go, people are in their face where we are in the info war. We're winning it. We're making progress, exposing these criminals. Information on 9-11? What the fuck is that? <laughs> you ever seen that guy? Yeah. Really? yeah, yeah. So you already know what's going on. <laughs> Peace. I think there's an elite system called the Bilderbergers, and I think these are the people who wanted this event to happen so that they could whip this citizenry into patriotic fervor like Caesar done with his own people. 
What's going on? Just out here trying to spread some info, man, trying to get to talk to people, trying to, yeah. you know what I mean, share facts on 9-11, uh, you know. You think, um, do you think 9-11 happened? Oh, yeah, I guess so. You know what I mean? I mean Certainly the Pentagon, did. The plane of the Pentagon, you think that happened? Did that? Well, you know what? I've never I seen it. I asked you an honest question. You think it I happened? I worked in the Pentagon when it happened. I work so in the I, Pentagon. Yeah, okay. You think that yeah. it was real, like a plane actually hit? I don't see where the wings would have went in. You know what I mean? Like, the, the windows were so still intact. So there's a intact. massive conspiracy in the highest levels of government <laughs> to contrive the, the point that an actual airplane came crashing into the building and people died. I'm just saying, I want I'll you to think to about what now. you're doing. You're spending your time, mm -hmm. valuable time. My I'll, heart, my soul heart right soul here. Right my right heart and soul right, right here, man. Brother. Hey, let me you tell, tell you how a building. Sign. You tell me how a building. You tell me how my friends that were in the Pentagon was in the, the building plane when it happened. Who's in my Where's the racket? You're in my Where's the photo? There's nothing for you. Are you fucking kidding me? I go to work. Every day I went to work, walked by the fucking plane wreckage. Are you kidding me? Ladies and gentlemen of the audience, are you kidding me? Larry Silverstein. Is this man for real? Yes, very for real. Real as it come, man. Flat, look, feel it. I know, Feel it. I know you're a man. Feel it. He's a good it's man. real. You know, it's you world search trade. your soul, which is a good soul, I feel. Yeah. Search your soul and decide with the time that you have on this earth to do something different. Do something different. You and I are going to stand here honestly and look at this and, and, and, and agree that this is the truth? That these are facts. That these are facts that are available. A fact is something that you, you don't know anything. Can you even name a hijacker? Truth. Can you name one hijacker? Can you? Can you name one hijacker from that day? You're they, standing out here with a sign that says that no it's truthful. Wait, it's yeah. not true. 9/11 truth would end the war. Got him. Got him. Got him. God came to Earth in human form. He walked on water. He helped heal the people, the blind that couldn't see, the deaf that couldn't hear. I don't know if that's, that means that literally, but those whose eyes weren't open and those whose ears were closed. You go out and you tell people that, and you go out and, you know, that's, that's the Christian belief, and that's what they believe in Jesus and God coming here to earth as Jesus Christ. And they're going to call you crazy for that, too. So it's quite easy to be called crazy, you know what I mean? Any, anybody can be called crazy about anything. You need to get on them and you need to find all the logistics of it. And if you're not on parks property, that means you're on city property, therefore they have to issue a permit. It's not 300 feet away. It's not a school. It's not a church. Therefore, it can't, it can't be ruled like that. We are three weeks away from 9-11. We still have a lot of work to do. Every day there's a street action. Every day there's an event. When we need the permits for the street actions, we need the venues. We need event insurance. We need somebody to take care of tickets. It's a lot of things to take care of, and we're going to take care of it. Let's start with the agenda. Website is going to be Vin, Dave, John Paul. Press release, Gary, John Paul, Harry. Anything else we need? We need security volunteers. We need stage and loading volunteers. And we need ticketing volunteers. We had a great meeting. We got a lot of things ahead of us. Let's talk it out. Let's communicate with each other. And let's keep doing good things. I never really wanted to be anybody taking charge of things, but it just happened. I just kind of did them because they needed to be done. Sometimes I just want to wake up and just watch football or basketball again. But I know what's going on. I've educated myself. I've heard from people firsthand what's really happening. And when you know something is wrong, if you don't do something about it, you're complicit. You're allowing it to happen. Touching. It's it's great. I have this inner urge, I just you know, I have to have to make these movies, I have to expose the New World Order to people. And I would love to not have that sometimes. It's like when um, when an oyster has a little bit of grit inside it and that grit is totally 
I don't know, it's destroying it. And the only way you can deal with this grit being in there is by covering it with layers and layers of what eventually becomes a pearl. I mean, maybe there's something inside me, whether it's in my physical being or in my spirit or in my soul, that's just driving me to make these films. The year of our Lord, 2029. Dublin, a vast metropolis, ruled by the iron fist of the New World Order. In a last-ditch effort to reclaim their power, the Church started a new crusade, preaching the word that the Pope was God. To enforce this, they engineered an elite squad of mindless assassins, the Sisterhood. I am Malice 101. This is my story. was the most obvious sign that there is such a thing as a new world order as a screenwriter you kind of learn these things you, uh, it's known as the inciting incident right you have in a screenplay you have a certain period of peace and then suddenly, suddenly something happens which lands the protagonist into a world of chaos and that's what 9-11 did it turned the world into basically into chaos it's almost like the entire thing the entire new world order apparatus has been scripted and it's uh, working like clockwork and it's working like as if it was written like a screenplay. At this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people and to defend the world from grave danger. Major combat operations in Iraq have ended, and now our coalition is engaged in securing and reconstructing that country. Yeah, what are these guys going to do? They're looking around. You're looking off the left. So that guy just stopped, or that just went through his truck, okay. I was running off into the field. You see this? Yep. I got a guy running, uh, throwing a weapon. Smoke him. Over by the uh, other side, he just dropped the weapon. I'm engaging. Roger that. Range auto. All right, got auto range on it. Roger. Hey, Roger, Hit engaging. Him. Got him. Good. Second one. Hit the right other here. one. It's a truck. Go to the right, see if anyone's moved by the truck. Take the trucks out. Is there anybody in the truck? Wait for movement. Not seeing any. Go ahead and store that. Auto range store. There's oh, another there's guy underneath. Move right there. Go ahead. Firing. Hit it. That's just going to come out of field of view. Roger. There's a big freedom march coming up. I'm not a great speaker, but they've asked me to speak anyway. Bush has promised that if we get hit by another terrorist attack, that he's going to put us immediately under military rule, martial law. You won't be able to fly or anything, you know. So if I get caught out like in Washington, D.C. here, I can walk at night and use my night vision equipment and not uh, have to worry about the roadblocks and all. They'll definitely stop me and uh, probably shoot me in the head because they're not going to put me in the camps. There's my uniform. Boy, it is wrinkled some. I put on 40 pounds and I have high blood pressure and I have sugar diabetes and a tremor. So I live in a very stressful world and it's showing on me. It's, it's showing on my health and, and uh, hopefully my health will allow me to keep going until we win the battle against these satanic uh, forces that have come across, uh, upon our nation and the world. You know, I won't quit till I'm dead. 
I, I have no reason to quit. We haven't won yet. seen you in 15 years. I'm ready. I'm ready to sort tigers. Jack McLeod! We're just one more false flag bombing in America away from being under martial law. We had our first fl false flag bombing in America on 9-11. I've had people calling me saying they go out to their mailbox and they wonder what the little red dot and blue dot is. Well, it's marking your mailbox by the government so when foreign troops come in here on us after martial law, if you have a red dot on your mailbox, they take you out immediately and shoot you right in the head. But if you have a blue dot, they take you to the FEMA camps being built by Halliburton right now. They're building enough concentration camps in America to house 50 million Americans. So I'm gonna tell all of you, if you have not, bought ammunition. If you have not bought guns, go get them now. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so glad uh, that you could join us today for this Wednesday, July 25th, 2001 broadcast. Tyranny is enveloping the globe. And the United States is a shining jewel the globalists want to bring down. And they will use terrorism as the pretext to get it done. I want you to find out these statements were true by the White House about preparing for martial law. And I want you to let them know that if there is any terrorism, we know who to blame. Call the White House and tell them, we know the government's planning terrorism. We know the Joint Chiefs of Staff wanted to blow up airliners, Baltimore Sun. If you do it, we're going to blame you because we know who's up to it. If any terrorism comes, it's from this government. And if there was an outside threat like a bin Laden, who was a known CIA asset in the 80s, running the Mujahideen War, and whose family builds all the military bases over in Saudi Arabia right now, and sits on the board of Iridium Satellite, he's the boogeyman they need in this Orwellian phony system. One of the favorite tactics of defenders of the Matrix or defenders of the false mainline reality that we're fed uh, that they use is, well, you guys just want to claim it's all a conspiracy and one centralized group runs everything because it makes it simpler for you and, and you want to bring order to things and it's scary for you. And they say, oh, you, you think that the government carried out 9-11 or elements of it did because that makes you feel better that the government's in control, not that it's some guys in a cave. And I go, what are you talking about? It'd be, I'd be a lot happier. It'd still be sad what happened, but I'd feel a lot better. If it was rogue people in a cave, because I'd know they were small and weak and, you know, probably couldn't strike me again. But to know that there are declassified U.S. government plans to carry out 9-11 style attacks, and to know they were running drills that day of it, attacking the buildings, uh, the CIA was, to, to make NORAD stand down and to know that the attacks were an inside job, that is horrifying. What do you mean I want to uh, believe it's, it's the government because it makes me feel better? That's a thousand times more terrifying and frightening. By the way, we've been in a recession for at least two years. They're now talking about, could we be in one? And this package is hundreds of billions more dumped into the markets, which is just going to devalue the dollar more. And I'm just sick of being interviewed by TV. I'm sick of uh, being interviewed, you know, in 
having people come into my life who are there for a few days, a few weeks, and you never see them again. Uh, I'm sick of it because I strike up friendships with people and then you know never see them again. Or more often than not, it's some fake liar who I wish would just say it's a hit piece and then I'd still talk to them. But they don't even, they won't even give me that much you know, human respect and dignity to just be honest about who they are. So that's it, basically. And now they've got History Channel pieces saying, basically, I'm the evil leader. And then I know I'm not even the best person to be presenting all this information. What do you mean? I mean, I'm a, well, nobody is. I mean, I'm not, I'm not perfect. And, uh, and used to a History Channel hit piece or something would, would, would make me mad at them. Because been, there's been a few other hit pieces. But just to, to realize that they know they're liars. I mean, they know. Saying, they say on the program, cell phones work at 50,000 feet in, in, in, in 2001. Cell phones don't work at 3,000 feet in 2001. They still don't unless it's an air phone. They just get away with so much evil. Just you ask yourself, when, do they, when, when, did, you know, when does it hit the end of the road? When, do the, when does evil start reversing itself? This is just a wall of heroes that I have. Pretty much all the people you see here were assassinated. They said this guy committed suicide by shooting himself twice in the face with a shotgun. He's the one who exposed government running cocaine uh, through the Iran Contra scandal. Uh, he was uh, a revolutionary leader in Congo that was assassinated. Malcolm X, Abraham Lincoln, Martha Luther King, William Cooper, JFK. To give everything, to give your life for something better, for something greater, for something you believe in. It's amazing. I mean, it's, it's something that you have to respect deeply. I uh, started getting harassing phone calls. People just said that they would kill me for doing what I'm doing. I'm not going to stop until the elite that controls 90% of the world's wealth are uh, exposed for what they're doing to the American people and the people of this world. We are going to pick up 50,000 flyers right now for our 9-11 events this year. Wednesday is when we're doing our first event. Just like after 9-11, everybody came together. We're coming together this 9-11. Mike, where are you from? Uh, Florida. Florida? Yeah, this is oh, all the way down. Chris. David. Yeah, I remember you. Yeah. How you doing? Dan. Call, man. What's up? Where are you from, Paul? Oh, nice Long Island. Yeah, yeah. God bless America. Investigate 9 11 properly. Come on, Thank you. I was down there. Were you down there? You're a hero. Are you dying? You are a The United States government had everything to do with the planning of 9 11. It's time we take this country back, and it starts now. It starts today. And we're doing it. CBS are not doing their job, so we will make sure they do their job. They're not coming fast enough. I heard y'all. 100,000 of these. All that crap has been refuted. By, By everyone. By everyone who? Can bin you Laden and wrong? nobody else. Bin Laden. Stop the bullshit. It was the CIA. It was this. It was Bin Laden and nobody else. Get the fuck out of my country. Goodbye. It takes 3,000 degrees to melt structural Cons steel, sir. Conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theory. <laughs> Well, obviously I'm not going to change no, your mind, right. but I would like you that, that, anyway, that goes, that goes to take a look at these movies. Uh. Stop that!
Blacks. This is the only way people will hear us. Security stand right out. to go live we want to jump in guerrilla information here, warfare we'll target of opportunity 911 is an inside job 911 was an inside job 911 was an inside job 911 was an inside job 911 was an inside job 911 was an inside job 911 was an inside job get to the new world order get to the new world order get to the new world order they got their little Oh, it was a Southwest employee who felt that my outfit was obscene and was offending other people. Well, you know, this is why we live in a free country. We are free to wear what we want to wear as long as it's not offensive. There's nothing offensive, uh, you know, in the outfit like this. But there's you absolutely know nothing wrong. Carried out the attack, Geraldo, you little media whore. Welcome back live. Uh, all hell is breaking loose on 6th Avenue. Uh, you know, you need a permit to protest or demonstrate here in New York, but this anarchist group came forward. They really are the, one of the least attractive groups of demonstrators I've ever seen. <laughs> they, uh, uh, I bet uh, one of the leaders, I guess, if violence breaks out, don't worry, we can handle it. Step back a little, step back from that car a little. Where, where, where yeah. do they take Everybody! Somebody somebody to leave the booth. Somebody to leave the booth. Everybody, listen! This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna be peaceful, we're not gonna block pedestrian traffic, but we're going to the police precinct where they have Alex at. And we're gonna make some noise! Free Alex Jones! Free Alex Jones! Free Alex Jones! Free Alex Jones! Free Alex Jones! Free Alex Jones! Free Alex Jones! Free Alex Jones! Free Alex Jones! Free Alex Jones! Free Alex Jones! Free Alex Jones! Whatever that means. I mean, the man predicted 9-11. The man confronted George W. Bush. The man makes me proud to be an American. The man is Alex Jones. Good, thank you. Thank you. A lot of people before us sacrificed and died in the defense of liberty and the fight against tyranny. A lot of people died so we'd have the little bit of freedoms we've got. They're precious. They were paid for in blood. 
want you to take action because they can kill us individually, but they cannot kill ideas. <laughs> ideas are eternal. Ideas, when they're the truth, are invincible. And ideas are bulletproof. And I'm here to tell you, I don't need you to thank me and tell me I've done a good job. I've done nothing but my duty. I discovered a bunch of bloodthirsty scum coming after innocent people. And I've been fighting them for 13 years. And I'll never stop while I'm drawing breath. standing here being silent than we have in any of the street action. We're surrounded by the enemy and the, the people see that, you know. We will bring the darkness into the light. We will. Some people here might not know what they're doing, but they'll figure it out too. They'll figure out why they're here eventually. That's our job. People think this is a joke. Not a joke. We're not kidding. We're for real. We're not just out here to be conspiracy theorists, to and protest to be an anarchist. We want truth. We want a good life. It's so real and people don't get it. They think it's a joke. They think we're full of shit. They have no clue how real we are. I don't know what else to say. We're defeating the enemy, though, every day. This is a good day for it.
Sears Bilderberg meeting. This is Pat Buchanan, Shatner. We, we confronted William Shatner on 9 11 Truth. This is also Arnold Schwarzenegger, the tax protest, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Nowadays, with technology, you can express yourself more than ever with a video camera and the internet. And with that tool, I think it's one of the biggest weapons in this info war. I think it's very important to understand the war and understand what our troops are going through. Humanity is out of it, but people are brought down to reality by watching clips on YouTube by watching clips on the internet of exactly what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, what you guys got to do. Spooky. You, all you get to see is their heat off their bodies. And what's really creepy about it is when they're shot and when they're killed, yep. their light the the goes way. off. Okay. Like... Put it to engage. During Vietnam, one of the key things that made people want to revolt and made people want to uh, resist the war is videos like, like this, videos of horrible things going on in Vietnam. And right now you see the media not doing their job, not covering what's going on in there, not covering how our soldiers are being wounded, how Iraqis are being killed. For their, they say break. The Democratic Socialist and the Republican Fascist administrations hate us because we we're so tenacious with fighting for liberty and freedom for all people. We're doing the very best we can to fight as long as we can in a nonviolent redress of our grievances because none of us want bloodshed, you know. However, the government keeps coming in and drawing blood, you know, on the Weaver family, the Waco church. And I was up at uh, Ruby Ridge handling the negotiations for the FBI for the Weaver family. And that was an eye-opener to me. I never thought I'd ever see 500 police attack a family up in the mountains and kill, kill part of the family, the mom and the son, and just flat murder them. And, uh, that was an eye-opener for me, I'll tell you. Boy, that was something. Good afternoon. A federal agent has been shot and killed in a confrontation with a fugitive in North Idaho. Randy Weaver, a fugitive on a federal firearms charge, has been holed up in a cabin near Naples for more than a year. Randy Weaver has told friends all he wants is to be left alone. But with the sudden appearance of military hardware like this, his one man standing. Do you think 9 11 happened? Oh, yeah, I guess so. You know what I mean? I mean Certainly. The Pentagon, did. the plane of the Pentagon, you think that happened? Did that? Well, you know what? I've never I seen it. I asked you an honest question. You think it I happened? I worked in the Pentagon when it happened. I work so in the I, Pentagon. Yeah, okay. You think that yeah. it was real? Like a plane actually hit? I don't see where the wings would have went in. You know what I mean? Like, the, the windows were so still intact. So there's a intact. massive conspiracy in the highest levels of government <laughs> to contrive the, the point that an actual airplane came crashing into the building and people died. I'm just saying, I want I'll you to think to about what now. you're doing. You're spending your time, mm -hmm. valuable time. My I'll, heart, my soul heart right soul here. Right my right heart and soul right, right here, man. Brother. Hey, let me you tell, tell you, you how a building. You tell me how a building. You tell me how my friends that were in the Pentagon was in the, the building plane when it happened. Who's in my Where's the racket? You're in my Where's the photo? There's nothing for you. Are you fucking kidding me? I go to Every day I went to work, walked by the fucking plane and wreckage. You the are you kidding me? Yeah, Larry Ladies Silverstein and gentlemen of the audience, are you kidding me? Larry, Larry Silverstein. <laughs> is this man for real? Yes, very for real. Real as it come, man. Flat, look, feel it. I know, feel it. I know you're a man. Feel it. It's man. real. You know, it's you world to search your soul, which is a good soul, I feel. Yeah. Search your soul and decide with the time that you have on this earth to do something different. Do something different. You and I are going to stand here honestly and look at this and, and, and, and agree that this is the truth? That these are facts. That these are facts that are available. A fact is something that you, you don't know anything. Can you even name a hijacker? Truth. Can you name one hijacker? Can you? Can you name one hijacker from that day? You're they, standing out here with a sign that says that no it's truthful. Wait, it's yeah. not true. 9 11 truth would end the war. God came to earth in human form. He walked on water. 
He helped heal the people, the blind that couldn't see, the deaf that couldn't hear. I don't know if that's, that means that literally, but those whose eyes weren't open and those whose ears were closed. You go out and you tell people that, and you go out and, you know, that's, that's the Christian belief, and that's what they believe in Jesus and God coming here to earth as Jesus Christ. And they're going to call you crazy for that, too. So it's quite easy to be called crazy. You know what I mean? Any, anybody can be called crazy about anything. You need to get on them and you need to find all the logistics of it. And if you're not on parks property, that means you're on city property. Therefore, they have to issue a permit. It's not 300 feet away. It's not a school. It's not a church. Therefore, it can't, it can't be ruled like that. We are three weeks away from 9-11. We still have a lot of work to do. Every day there's a street action. Every day there's an event. When we need the permits for the street actions, we need the venues, we need event insurance, we need somebody to take care of tickets. It's a lot of things to take care of, and we're going to take care of it. Let's start with the agenda. Website is going to be Vin, Dave, John Paul. Press release, Gary, John Paul, Harry. Anything else we need? We started something called the Aid and Abet Police Newsletter. The subtitle was Constitutional Issues for Lawmen. I was being ostracized and driven out of my career because I wanted to serve and protect the people 100%. My favorite job in the whole world was being a beat officer. Going daily to people's homes when they need you. And uh, <clears throat> uh, when you're that comfortable with what you're doing and that satisfied, you don't want to make waves. You don't want to change anything. I've dedicated 27 years to this work as a volunteer. And my wife can tell you, we have nothing. I would love to have a home. I don't. I live in an old 1977 mobile home, single wide. My bride deserves better than that, but we live on my small medical pension and we don't have hardly anything. But I can't stop. We have the, the, the jury box, we have the ballot box, and then we have the cartridge box. We still have our guns. It might come to violence. I pray not, you know. But we're not going to be slaves. I'm not going to see my nine grandchildren be slaves. You know, I'm just not going to do that, you know. It has never been an American war, small or large, in which access has been so limited. The so-called war on terrorism has created a climate of effective censorship in a land claiming to be the home of free speech. May it have been uh, an inside job? Might these people have gotten help from the inside? Now there's a lot more evidence that suggests it's almost certainly the case. Loose Change Final Cut is a 9-11 truth documentary questioning the official government story of 9-11. I've seen it probably 50 times now. I watch it all the time whenever I get time. I'm not on a spiritual quest for the truth, you know. In a sense I am, but it's not a spiritually driven thing, I don't think. It gets kind of confusing. I got it down in my head, though. That's my boat, and the other two boats are my bosses, and they have another boat. You can see the roof of their house way over there. I was originally one of the carpenters that helped build the, the house. When we got done building the house, you know, they offered me a job to stay on as a caretaker. So, you know, it was either go back to Orlando and sit in traffic all day, live out on an island, and take a boat to work. Attention all citizens! We are giving away free DVDs that proves the official government story of 9-11 is a lie and a cover-up. I encourage each and every one of you to take a free DVD home, watch it, and decide for yourself. This is more important than how much Britney Spears hair sold for on eBay, Dancing with the Stars, or who's going to be America's next idol. Sure can, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, I work construction. I've seen control. Oh, okay. It takes 3,000 degrees to melt structural Cons steel, sir. Conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory. <laughs> well, obviously I'm not going to change no, your mind, right. but I would like you to, that, anyway, that go, that go to take a look at these movies. Uh,
sir. Thank you for coming out. Good to see you, man. 911 was an inside job. 911 was an inside job. 911 was an inside job. 911 was an inside job. 911 was an inside job. Geraldo Rivera is about to go live. We want to jump in guerrilla information warfare. Target of opportunity. 911 is an inside job. 911 was an inside job. It was a Southwest employee who felt that my outfit was obscene and was offending other people. Well, you know, this is why we live in a free country. We are free to wear what we want to wear as long as it's not offensive. There's nothing offensive, uh, you know, in the outfit like this. But there's you absolutely know nothing your wrong. Carrying out the attack, Geraldo, you little media whore. doesn't happen this way. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> it looks a little bit better. My chimes, I don't want the chimes. Something's yeah, wrong. Yeah, we have this one already. A lot of people came here for their religious rights. One of the most important things, I think, is uh, has to do with our Christian rights. Uh, don't you think so, Jen? Mm -hmm. I think that people came into this community as a covenant community so we could live the way that our great-grandparents lived. Yeah, that's right. A hundred to two hundred years ago. I want to be a free man myself. I want to be free to live for God, to help my brothers, to live for one another, to have love for one another. I don't want to be controlled. And I think the New World Order is control. And uh, it's evil, I believe. There are two forces. There is no gray matter. It's all either black or it's white. It is good versus evil, and good will always prevail, because when we know the truth, the truth truly will set us free. I don't know for sure how many I have, uh, to tell you the truth. A lot of them I ordered from different ones. Alex Jones, for example, I ordered some from him. You guys heard of the Philadelphia Experiment? <laughs> it's kind of interesting. <laughs> Mind control out of control. It was only a paper moon. I was telling you about that one. That's about the uh, Apollo moon ship. I feel like militias are important because we can't always trust our own government for one reason. If we don't have our own militias, our own groups, and our government comes against us, we're just slaves. They can enslave us, put us in prison, or whatever they want to do with us. Yeah, get your guitar out, Pa. My vacuum song? Yeah. From Romans 8:28. Yeah, sing it. Yeah. Oh, that all things work together for good? Yeah. That one? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. See? When I was just a little child, my father said to me, if you'll put Jesus first in your life, this is what you'll see, that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. All things work together for good by trusting in His Word. Troubles may come. We have a hotel room at the Westfields Marriott, but we're kicked out in the morning when the official Bilderberg Group meeting starts. A day ago, it was crawling with security. You pull a camera out, they run up and threaten to arrest you. If you had 100 film stars 
meeting in secret at a luxury hotel. The whole world will want to know. But we have 120 plus world elite. I mean, everybody came together. We're coming together. This 9-11. Mike, where are you from? Uh, Florida. Florida? Yeah, this is oh, all the way down. Chris. David. Yeah, I remember you. Yeah. How you doing? Dan. Carl, man. What's up? Where are you from, Paul? Oh, nice Long Island. Yeah, yeah. God bless America. Investigate 9 11 properly. Come on, these I was down there. Were you down there? You're a hero, aren't you? The United States government had everything to do with the planning of 9 11. It's time we take this country back, and it starts now. It starts today. And we're doing it. CBS is not doing their job, so we will make sure they do their job. They're not coming fast enough. I heard y'all. I had 100,000 of these. All that crap has been reviewed by, by everyone. By everyone who? Can bin Laden and wrong? nobody else. Bin Laden Stop the wrong. bullshit. It was the CIA. It was this. It was Bin Laden and nobody else. Get the fuck out of my country. Okay. Goodbye. It takes 3,000 degrees to melt structural Cons steel, sir. Conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theory. <laughs> Well, obviously I'm not going to change no, your mind, right. but I would like you that, that, anyway, that goes, that goes to take a look at these movies. Uh -huh. other people. Well, you know, this is why we live in a free country. We are free to wear what we want to wear as long as it's not offensive. There's nothing offensive, uh, you know, in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. Major combat operations in Iraq have ended, and now our coalition is engaged in securing and reconstructing that country. Yeah, what are these guys going to do? They're looking around. You're looking off the left. Yeah, that's where that guy just stopped. Started that. Just went into his truck. Okay. I was running off into the field. You see this? Yep. I got a guy running, uh, throwing a weapon. Smoke him. Yeah. Over by the uh, other side. He just dropped the weapon. I'm engaging. Started that. Range auto. All right, got auto range on it. Roger. Yeah, Roger. Hit engaging. Him. Got him. Good. Second one. Hit the right other here. one. Hit the truck. Go to the right, see if anybody's moved by the truck. Take the trucks out. Is there anybody in the truck? Wait for movement. Not seeing any. Go ahead and store that. Auto range store. There's oh, another there's guy underneath. Move right there. Go ahead. Firing. Hit it. That's it. You come out of field of view. Roger.
there's a big freedom march coming up. I'm not a great speaker, but they've asked me to speak anyway. Bush has promised that if we get hit by another terrorist attack, that he's going to put us immediately under military rule, martial law. You won't be able to fly or anything, you know. So if I get caught out like in Washington, D.C. here, I can walk at night and use my night vision equipment and not uh, have to worry about the roadblocks and all. They'll definitely stop me and uh, probably shoot me in the head because they're not going to put me in the camps. There's my uniform. Boy, it is wrinkled some. I put on 40 pounds and I have high blood pressure and I have sugar diabetes and a tremor. So I live in a very stressful world and it's showing on me. It's, it's showing on my health and, and uh, hopefully my health will allow me to keep going until we win the battle against these. See if that cop's following us. Look at these government trucks, man. Yeah, we got a car right behind us. Just get out of here, Richard. Go as soon as you can, Richard. Is that guy still following us? Yep. Keep going. Go pull into that car wash over there. Go into that shopping center over there. Come stop, here. stop, stop. I want footage. Okay, go He's that coming way around the back. He's right no, around. I want to get head on with him. Okay. Yeah, well, that's definitely military intelligence. Following. Following fast. Don't lose him. Get on his ass. Get his plates. Stop. That's all right. I don't want to harass him too much. He'll call him back up. Go park over there. Let's go out this way so they don't notice the vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. You want your camera set up right at the view level. Your windshields are going to be about right here. This is windshield level. Rob, bring a super zoom in. I want super zoom on that. Can you say hi to Alex? Hey, son. Hey, hey son. Dan, or say hi. No, I mean, come on over, because you I wasn't here earlier. Do you tell me? But, I mean, have you confirmed what they're saying is true, officer? Dude, that cop's on our side, I can tell. Yeah. Get off the island. <laughs> is this private property? Yes, it is, sir. Get him, get him. Your hey, new world order's going down. We're not your slaves. Get your yeah. hands yeah. Long live the Republic. Your new world order will fail. Your new world order crash, you degenerate scum. Your new world order we're out here because this is where the elites meet with Secret Service, with Mossad, with MI6 security backing them up. Why isn't the U.S. mainstream media reporting on it? Set it up right now, up, uh, internet card, firewire, camera right here, and we're going live, just like major media does, but we're doing it through the internet. In a couple of months, 9-11 is going to be taking place, and we're going to have huge street actions in the city of New York where we're going to give out hundreds of thousands of flyers. Uh, hundreds of DVDs and we're going to give them out free for the people and we're going to educate people, we're going to change minds and we're going to save lives with the money we raise for first responders. Six security backing them up. Why isn't the U.S. mainstream media reporting on it? Set it up right now, up, uh, internet card, firewire, camera right here, and we're going live, just like major media does, but we're doing it through the internet. In a couple of months, 9-11 is going to be taking place, and we're going to have huge street actions in the city of New York where we're going to give out hundreds of thousands of flyers, uh, hundreds of DVDs, and we're going to give them out free for the people, and we're going to educate people, we're going to change minds, and we're going to save lives with the money we raise for first responders.
just the Constitution. As soon as I put it up, Alex Jones had it up on InfoWars. He was praising the fact that people are getting out and doing these confrontations and saying these criminals, no matter where they go, people are in their face where we are in the info war, we're winning it, we're making progress, exposing these criminals. Information on 9-11? What the fuck is that? <laughs> you ever seen that guy? Yeah. Really? yeah, yeah. So you already know what's going on. <laughs> Peace. I think there's an elite system called the Bilderbergers, and I think these are the people who wanted this event to happen so that they could whip this citizenry into patriotic fervor like Caesar done with his own people. What's going on? Just out here trying to spread some info, man, trying to get talk to people, trying to, yeah. you know what I mean, share facts on 9-11, uh, you know. You think, um, you think 9-11 happened? Oh, yeah, I guess so. You know what I mean? I mean Certainly the Pentagon, did. The plane of the Pentagon, you think that happened? Did that? Well, you know what? I've never I seen it. I asked you an honest question. You think it I happened? I worked in the Pentagon when it happened. I work so in the I, Pentagon. Yeah. You think that yeah. it was real, like no, a plane no, actually hit? I don't see where the wings would have went in. You know what I mean? Like, the, the windows were so still intact. So there's a massive conspiracy in the highest levels of government <laughs> to contrive the, the point that an actual airplane came crashing into the building and people died. I'm just saying, I want I'll you to think to about what now. you're doing. You're spending your time, mm -hmm. valuable time. My I'm, heart, my soul heart right soul here. Right my right heart and soul right, right here, man. Brother. Hey, let me you tell, tell you how a building. You tell me how a building. You tell me how my friends that were in the Pentagon was in the, the building when it happened. Who's in my NYPD? You're in my Where's the photo? There's nothing for you. Are you fucking kidding me? Up, dude. Every day no, I went to up. work, walked by the fucking plane and wreckage. Are garage, you kidding me? Yeah, Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen of the audience. Forcer, and he's enforcing the New World Order locally, state and federally. I began to change. I began to see that I was part of a corrupt system, a very evil system, and I wasn't going to do it. When they gave me an immoral order or an unlawful order, I said, no, I won't do it. That was it for my career. This is what we fight here in our two police and military organizations. We fight to educate our soldiers and police officers about their constitutional oath to defend you and your freedoms. I'd like to bring on again our guest speaker, Jack McLan. We started something called the Aid and Abet Police Newsletter. The subtitle was Constitutional Issues for Lawmen. I was being ostracized and driven out of my career because I wanted to serve and protect the people 100%. My favorite job in the whole world was being a beat officer. Going daily to people's homes when they need you. And uh, <clears throat> uh, when you're that comfortable with what you're doing and that satisfied, you don't want to make waves. You don't want to change anything. I've dedicated 27 years to this work as a volunteer, and my wife can tell you, we have nothing. I would love to have a home. I don't. I live in an old 1977 mobile home, single wide. My bride deserves better than that, but we live on my small medical pension, and we don't have hardly anything. But I can't stop. We have the, the, the jury box. We have the ballot box. And then we have the cartridge box. We still have our guns. It might come to violence. I pray not, you know, but we're not going to be slaves. I'm not going to see my nine grandchildren be slaves. You know, I'm just not going to do that, you know. It has never been an American war, small or large, in which access has been so limited. The so-called war on terrorism has created a climate of effective censorship in a land claiming to be the home of free speech. May it have been uh, an inside job? Might these people have gotten help from the inside? Now there's a lot more evidence that suggests it's almost certainly the case. Liz Chain's Final Cut is a 9-11 truth documentary questioning the official government story of 9-11. I've seen it probably 50 times now. I watch it all the time whenever I get time. I'm not on a spiritual quest for the truth, you know. In a sense, I am, but it's not a spiritually driven thing, I don't think. It gets kind of confusing. I got it down in my head, though. That's my boat, and the other two boats are my bosses, and they have another boat. You can see the roof of their house 
way over there. I was originally one of the. It'd be, I'd be a lot happier. It'd still be sad what happened, but I'd feel a lot better if it was rogue people in a cave because I'd know they were small and weak and you know probably couldn't strike me again. But to know that there are declassified U.S. government plans to carry out 9/11 style attacks and to know they were running drills that day of it, attacking the buildings, uh, the CIA was to to make NORAD stand down and to know that the attacks were an inside job. That is horrifying. What do you mean? I want to uh, believe it's, it's the government because it makes me feel better. That's a thousand times more terrifying and frightening. Uh, two successive quarters of negative economic growth have not been met. Very possibly, we actually had a loss of private sector jobs in the last report. We've seen an actual downturn in manufacturing. But I think what, what, what's very important uh, is not only keeping it temporary as and quick, as uh, Chairman Bernanke said, but making sure you actually are addressing the key issues. By the way, we've been in a recession for at least two years. They're now talking about could we be in one. And this package is hundreds of billions more dumped into the markets, which is just going to devalue the dollar more. And I'm just sick of being interviewed by TV. I'm sick of uh, being interviewed, you know, and having people come into my life who are there for a few days, a few weeks, and you never see them again. Uh, I'm sick of it because I strike up friendships with people and then, you know, never see them again. Or more often than not, it's some fake liar who I wish would just say it's a hit piece and then I'd still talk to them. But they don't even, they won't even give me that much, you know, human respect and dignity to just be honest about who they are. So that's it, basically. And now they've got History Channel pieces saying, basically, I'm the evil leader. And then I know I'm not even the best person to be presenting all this information. What do you mean? I mean, I'm, well, nobody is. I mean, I'm not, I'm not perfect. And, uh, and used to a History Channel hit piece or something would, would, would make me mad at them. Because I've been, there's been a few other hit pieces. But just to, to realize that they know they're liars. I mean, they know. Saying, they say in the program, cell phones work at 50,000 feet in, in, in, in 2001. Cell phones don't work at 3,000 feet in 2001. They still don't unless it's an air phone. They just get away with so much evil. Just you ask yourself, when, do they, when, when, did, you know, when does it hit the end of the road? When, do the, when does evil start reversing itself? Going daily to people's homes when they need you and uh, <clears throat> uh, when you're that comfortable with what you're doing and that's satisfied, you don't want to make waves. You don't want to change anything. I've dedicated 27 years to this work as a volunteer. And my wife can tell you, we have nothing. I would love to have a home. I don't. I live in an old 1977 mobile home, single wide. My bride deserves better than that. But we live on my small medical pension. and. We don't have hardly anything, but I can't stop. We have the, the, the jury box, we have the ballot box, and then we have the cartridge box. We still have our guns. It might come to violence. I pray not, you know, but we're not going to be slaves. I'm not going to see my nine grandchildren be slaves. You know, I'm just not going to do that, you know. Loose Chain's final cut is a 9-11 truth documentary questioning the official government story of 9-11. I've seen it probably 50 times now. I watch it all the time whenever I get time. I'm not on a spiritual quest for the truth. You know, in a sense I am, but it's not a spiritually driven thing, I don't think. That gets kind of confusing. I got it down in my head, though. That's my boat and the other two boats are my bosses, and they have another boat. You can see the roof of their house 
parked way over there. I was originally one of the carpenters that helped build the, the house. When we got done building the house, you know, they offered me a job to stay on as a caretaker. So, you know, it was either go back to Orlando and sit in traffic all day, live out on an island and take a boat to work. Attention all citizens! We are giving away free DVDs that proves the official government story of 9-11 is a lie and a cover-up. I encourage each and every one of you to take a free DVD home, watch it, and decide for yourself. This is more important than how much Britney Spears hair sold for on eBay, Dancing with the Stars, or Who's Gonna Be America's Next Idol? Sure can, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, I work construction. I've seen controlled Sir, demolition. One, one building, says, seven. building 7 was a 47-story yeah, building. And it was damaged because I watched it live. And it, it fell live. in six and a half seconds. Free fall I speed. watched it. I saw it. I heard no explosions. When there's a controlled oh, demolition. Oh, there's, so, there, there's eyewitness what? reports of you, sir. You're I watched it on TV you're live. Missing you're missing four. You're missing four. I didn't see it on TV. Watch this I DVD. I didn't see it live. Don't watch Watch this DVD and listen to it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. You know what I mean? Sure, I mean certainly the Pentagon, did. The point of the Pentagon, you think that happened? Did that? Well, you know what? I've never seen it. I want to ask you an honest question. You think it I happened? I worked in the Pentagon when it happened. I work so in the I, Pentagon. Yeah, okay. You think that yeah. it was real? Like no, a plane no, actually hit? Happened. I don't see where the wings would have went in. You know what I mean? Like, the, the windows were so still intact. So there's a massive conspiracy in the highest levels of government <laughs> to contrive the, the point that an actual airplane came crashing into the building and people died. I'm just saying, I want I'll you to think to about you what you're doing. You're spending your time, mm -hmm. valuable time. My uh, heart, my soul, heart right soul here. My right heart, here. soul, no, right here, you, man. Brother. Hey, let me you tell, tell you me how a building. You tell me how a building. You tell me how my friends that were in the Pentagon was in the the building building plane fucking hit. Who's in my Where's the racket? You're in my Where's the photo? There's nothing for you. Are you fucking kidding me? I go to work. Dude, Every day I went to up. work, walked by the fucking plane and wreckage. You are you kidding me? Yeah, Ladies and gentlemen of the audience, are you kidding me? <laughs> Larry, Larry Silverstein. Is this man for real? Part. Yes, very for real. Real as it come, man. Flat, look, feel it. I know, feel it. I know you're a man. Feel it. It's man. real. You know, it's you World search Church. your soul, which is a good soul, I feel. Yeah. Search your soul and decide with the time that you have on this earth to do something different. Do something different. You and I are going to stand here honestly and look at this and, and, and, and agree that this is the truth? That these are facts. That these are facts that are available. A fact is something that you, you don't know anything. Can you even name a hijacker? Truth. Can you name one hijacker? Can you? Can you name one hijacker from that day? You're they standing out here with a sign that says that no it's truthful. Well, it's yeah. not true. 9 11 truth would end the war. God came to earth in human form. He walked on water. He helped heal the people, the blind that couldn't see, the deaf that couldn't hear. I don't know if that's, that means that literally, but those whose eyes weren't open and those whose ears were closed. You go out and you tell people that, and you go out and, you know, that's, that's the Christian belief, and that's what they believe in Jesus and God coming here to earth as Jesus Christ. And they're going to call you crazy for that, too. So it's quite easy to be called crazy, you know what I mean? Any, anybody can be called crazy about anything. You need to get on them and you need to find all the logistics of it. And if you're not on parks property, that means you're on city property. Therefore, they have to issue a permit. It's not 300 feet away. It's not a school. It's not a church. Therefore, it can't, it can't be ruled like that. We are three weeks away from 9-11. We still have a lot of work to do. Every day there's a street action. Every day there's an event. When we need the permits for the street actions, we need the venues. We need event insurance. We need somebody to take care of tickets. It's a lot of things to take care of, and we're going to take care of it. Let's start with the agenda. Website is going to be Vin, Dave, John Paul. Press release, Gary, John Paul, Harry. Anything else we need? We need security volunteers. We need... I have this inner urge. I just, you know, I have to, have to make these movies. I have to expose the New World Order to people. And I would love to not have that sometimes. It's like when, um, when an oyster has a little bit of grit inside it, and that grit is totally... I don't know, it's destroying it, and the only way you can deal with this grit being in there is by covering it with layers and layers of what eventually becomes a pearl. I mean, maybe there's something inside me, whether it's in my physical being or in my spirit or in my soul, that's just driving me to make these films. The year of our Lord, 2029. Dublin, a vast metropolis ruled by the iron fist of the New World Order. In a 
last ditch effort to reclaim their power, the church started a new crusade, preaching the word that the Pope was God. To enforce this, they engineered an elite squad of mindless assassins, the Sisterhood. I am Malice 101. This is my story. was the most obvious sign that there is such a thing as a new world order. As a screenwriter, you kind of learn these things. You, uh, it's known as the inciting incident, right? You have, in a screenplay, you have a certain period of peace and then suddenly, suddenly something happens which lands the protagonist into a world of chaos. And that's what 9-11 did. It turned the world into, basically, into chaos. It's almost like the entire thing, the entire new world order apparatus has been scripted and it's uh, working like clockwork and it's working like as if it was written like a screenplay. At this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people and to defend the world from grave danger. Major combat operations in Iraq have ended, and now our coalition is engaged in securing and reconstructing that country. Yeah, what these guys got to do? Look around. You're looking off the left. So that guy just stopped, or that just went through his truck. Free Alex Jones! Free Alex Jones! Free Alex Jones! Free Alex Jones! Free Alex Jones! Free Alex Jones! Free Alex Jones! Free Alex Jones! We better get out of here. They told me we don't leave. They're gonna rock and roll on us. Whatever that means. The man predicted 9/11. The man confronted George W. Bush. The man makes me proud to be an American. A lot of people before us sacrificed and died in the defense of liberty and the fight against tyranny. A lot of people died so we have the little bit of freedoms we've got. They're precious. They were paid for in blood. I want you to take action because they can kill us individually, but they cannot kill ideas. <laughs> ideas are eternal. Ideas, when they're the truth, are invincible. And ideas are bulletproof. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you, I don't need you to thank me and tell me I've done a good job. I've done nothing but my duty. I discovered a bunch of bloodthirsty scum coming after innocent people, and I've been fighting them for 13 years, and I'll never stop while I'm drawing breath. surrounded by the enemy and the, the people see that you know 
We will bring the darkness into the light. We will. They'll figure out why they're here eventually. That's our job. People think this is a joke. Not a joke. We're not kidding. We're for real. We're not just out here to be conspiracy theorists to and protest to be anarchist. We want truth. We want a good life. It's so real and people don't get it. They think it's a joke. They think we're full of shit. They have no clue They're how real we are. I don't know what else to say. We're defeating the enemy, though, every day. This is a good day for it. before us sacrificed and died in the defense of liberty and the fight against tyranny. A lot of people died so we have the little bit of freedoms we've got. They're precious. They were paid for in blood. I want you to take action because they can kill us individually, but they cannot 
kill ideas. Ideas are eternal. Ideas, when they're the truth, are invincible. And ideas are bulletproof. And I'm here to tell you, I don't need you to thank me and tell me I've done a good job. I've done nothing but my duty. I discovered a bunch of bloodthirsty scum coming after innocent people, and I've been fighting them for 13 years, and I'll never stop while I'm drawing breath. Well, this is just our little shipping office, and it supplements the radio show and the filmmaking and what we do. And we sell a lot of other books and videos uh, by other researchers. I just brainstormed with Rob and Aaron about all of the subjects and all the things the globalists were involved in and how they all tie together. So you have central banks, corporate fascist coups, income tax, Woodrow Wilson, Federal Reserve, social Darwinism. They've set up their world government through the UN, and then they have the Bilderberg Group, where the owners of it all privately meet and discuss the course for the next year. You've got their main agendas, eugenics, and they're implementing their control and takeover through the American Union and the NAFTA highways to fund it, and the Amero and the Open Borders and the Security and Prosperity Partnership, and um, it just all ties together. I'm here trying to mobilize the leaders, the good people, the champions uh, who are out there right now. I'm trying to mobilize you in defense of the human species against a very out of control, aberrant, malfunctioning group of our fellow humans who are doing some very bad things. And I'm trying to mobilize them to take action against the new world order and to resist them. And a short time to get there. Hold on. Old Smokey's, Smokey's got, got his ears on, and he's hot on your trail, and he's not going to rest and you're in jail. So you got to dodge him, you got to duck him, you got to keep that diesel trucking. Just put that hammer down and, and give him hell. He's the problem with the Pentagon, the Pentagon would be great to get because it's occultic too. The problem is, is that if they see you anywhere, even miles around videotaping it, Army, Protective Services, or Pentagon Protective Services, two different groups, that happened to Dylan Avery. Run over, grab your cameras, erase everything, and put guns to your head. And that's really exciting to get on tape, but I don't really want to have it on tape. You guys want to go to the Pentagon? What we're looking at here is a giant Masonic obelisk, a giant power talisman that was built uh, with religious love and care. A lot of people know this. Remember in Ghostbusters, where the whole building is an antenna for religious power? They didn't think that up. It's in all the Masonic literature. You see, so you'd think of it like that, and people would say, well, that's in a movie. Well, movies generally reflect life. They just then add a, some stupid ghosts and goblins to it. Let's be clear. I don't believe that they're really pulling energy and power into their phallus and energizing themselves to be God-men. Uh, they believe it. What's going on? All we're doing is out here. My ears saying, you have to save the world. <laughs> I, <don't... laughs> I did actually get a CAT scan and anyway, well, it showed something very interesting. If you look at the world today and you go, why is everything going wrong and why are people dying and there's civil wars and unrest and people dying of famine, etc. You can't see what the connections are. But when you look at the, the plans that for example, the Bilderberg Group or the secret government have had since the 50s, suddenly you just, everything becomes simple. You know, you don't have to save the world. The world is fine as it is. It's just that a certain group, a small group of people are actually at the top of this pyramid who are actually controlling, um, who are creating these kind of realities, terrorism and all that stuff.
My fellow Americans and all those that love God and liberty listening in around the world, welcome back to the Officer Jack McLam program coming to you from the high Rocky Mountains of Idaho, USA. We've been having citizens meetings here in our local area. We discuss things like this FBI flyer that was handed out to police officers only. If you encounter any of these people, immediately call the Joint Terrorism Task Force right-wing extremists, people that make numerous references to the U.S. Constitution are domestic terrorists. We're one of 350 families that came up here to get away from what we believe is coming as the collapse of the American civilization. We try to get the top of the mountains to build our communities because old Colonel Bo Greitz talks about the military aspect to capture the high ground. This is what a police officer used to be, and that's what I was on the city of Phoenix. I was a friend of the people, but today, this is what we have. This one is your enforcer, and he's enforcing the new world order locally, state, and federally. I began to change. I began to see that I was part of a corrupt system, a very evil system, and I wasn't going to do it. When they gave me an immoral order or an unlawful order, I said, no, I won't do it. That was it for my career. This is what we fight here in our two police and military organizations. We fight to educate our soldiers and police officers about their constitutional oath to defend you and your freedoms. I'd like to bring on again our guest speaker, Jack McLean. We started something called the Aid and Abet Police Newsletter. The subtitle.